so I will talk about the proof of space. Um, and this is something we use in, in the application of distributed storage. So the setting is we have some storage providers in some network, in some de uh, decentralized network that um, want to onboard storage capacity to the network. And they are incentivized by some rewards. Um, so they need to ensure uh, that they, so they provide this um, disk uh, uh, space in, in, for, uh, for the network and prove it. And uh, nodes in the network will be able to verify that this data or storage capacity is maintained, secured, and indeed um, uh, permanently uh, uh, provided to the network. So this requires some checks and some checks and some proofs of storage. And the tool we use here is vector commitments. Uh, as we've seen, we can commit to a data vector and in a very uh, concise manner. And then later on, open some positions of the data to make sure that someone is, is really storing the, that, that vector. Okay, so how exactly it works for Filecoin? Um, the proof of storage requires to um, uh, split the data into sectors of uh, 32 gigabytes. Um, and because this sector can be any kind of data, we like to encode them in uncompressible in an uncompressible manner, and then commit to this encoded uh, 32 gigabytes. And we submit the commitments in into the chain. Um, so later on, we can check that the the storage is still is still there. So what we will do later, we will re ask the storage provider to show us some positions. Um, in this vector that they still store. So we open the commitment to some positions, send the proofs, and uh, check the proofs with respect to the commitments we had before in the, in the, in the blocks. OK. So as I said, the first step in this process is to take the data and encode it, what we call seal it, into a replica, which is another version of the data that is incompressible. So to make sure that uh, the storage provider is indeed dedicating that amount of space on their disk to the network, the data should not, the data stored there should not be compressed. So this um, encoding or sealing um, process is some very large computation that takes a lot of time and we know exactly, we can estimate exactly how long it takes and we make sure it's, it takes a lot of time. So it's not possible to do it like in a short uh, period when you are just challenged to show that you have a replica. Uh, so that's the assumption. Uh, replication, like uh, encoding the data, it's long. So once you have the replica, you better store it and not delete it and try again to encode it from some compressible data. So what uh, a storage provider will do, will commit to the data, will commit to the, this replica after it computes it and put them into the chain. So put it in the block, submit it as my commitment that I store some replica uh, in, uh, in my disk. Okay, so in order to make sure that indeed this commitment to the replica is a commitment to something that is uncompressible, in the first phase, we will just ask the storage provider to demonstrate that indeed it, it did the encoding to the replica. So how this proof of replication works is asking a challenge to the storage provider, which has to prove that it encoded the data. So it opens some, some positions in the, in the data, initial data, and some position in the replica and then proves that the relation between the openings um, is valid with respect to the process, which is a public process of encoding. So indeed, it followed this encoding strategy in order to uh, obtain the positions in the replica with respect to the initial positions in there. And this is a large computation they had to do. So proving a large computation also requires some techniques to make it fast uh, to verify. And we use this uh, Saxon non-interactive arguments of knowledge, known as NARCs, in order to prove such a process and to make sure that the, the, the storage provider really had a valid replica that it was committed to the chain. 
So once we have this, we trust that the committed uh, replica and the committed data, the, the, the user submitted to the chain is correct because this NARC verifies with respect to the encoding procedure. And then later on, now that we trust the initial commitment, we want to make sure that this is a persistent storage. So the prover should, the storage provider should continue to store the data, should continue to allocate this disk capacity to the network. Uh, so to make sure that this, uh, this is uh, the case, uh, we query now and then, like periodically, to the storage provider um, some position to be open from, from the replica. So the storage provider will only store the replica and the commitment to the replica. It can even delete the data because it can be recovered from the replica. And then it's challenge to open some random position in the replica and demonstrate those are valid with respect to the initial commitment to the replica, which is trusted. It's trusted because it was already uh, proven to the proof of replication. And it submits these uh, proofs to the chain. So because deleting the replica will ask the prover to do a long uh, computation to recover it from some compressible data, um, this uh, cheating uh, strategy is not valid because we need to, to answer fast these queries of uh, opening some positions in the replica. Okay. And now in practice, in our systems, we are using Merkle trees and not uh, new vector commitments. So we are using uh, something that is not that uh, uh, succinct. It doesn't have really updates, uh, as Dario said, updates uh, properties or other fancy features of new vector commitments. So we just take the data and we hash it into a tree to a commitment, which is the root of the tree. And the encoding, um, the proof of replication, so showing the encoding, will ask us to open some position here in the, in the data, in the replica and in the data and show the relation between each other. The relation is shown by a snark. But what's, what's worse is that even aggregating position for vector commitments, uh, which are Merkle trees really need um, snarks in order to make the proof compact. So we will snarkify everything. So this requires a lot of snarks in the proof of replications, which is not optimal. For the proof of space time, um, so we are asked these challenges and we have to open different, data, different position in, in the replica. So opening many position in, uh, in a Merkle tree also requires many proofs that are logarithmic time. And since we want to avoid having a, a very large proof, we will put a snark on top of it. So we will um, uh, we will um, aggregate many, many opening for Merkle trees into the snark and uh, submit that snark to the, to the chain. Um, so future direction will be to overcome this uh, limitation of uh, Merkle trees, where Merkle trees are not always very uh, snark friendly, so they are not compatible with the, the, the snark algebraic structure because of this hashing. So um, we would like to find maybe another way to, to commit uh, to this uh, initial vector and to the replica vector uh, that allow to prove uh, knowledge of a subvector more efficiently than just uh, uh, put many opening of a Merkle tree in, into a snark. And uh, we also need something for the replication, which is an overhead today because we need uh, snarks in order to, to prove that some openings of a vector commitment um, satisfy some, some, com some property, so this encoding properties. Uh, so something more compatible with this uh, in terms of vector commitment will also help to improve our protocols. So some of the open problems were also mentioned by Dario and they are of independent interest, but they are also very useful for this use case. Um, functional vector commitments with more expressive functions. So we can hope to open position and show that the position satisfies some function uh, that we have for the proof of replication. Of course, transparent setup, post quantum, which is always good to, to uh, um, prevent the future uh, quantum uh, um, attacks. Aggregation for subvector uh, commitments as well. Um, we also don't necessarily need to show the the openings to the verifier, but an, only an argument of knowledge of some openings suffices for this uh, application. 
uh, structure preserving vector commitments if we want to replace the Merkle tree with something like uses vector commitments um, and trade-offs for storage and computation for provers as Dario already presented. So those are those are uh, the open question and now I'm taking your questions. So I don't see anything, so maybe we should move forward. Um, we can always have a Q&A uh, um, discussion in between talks. 